Okay, so with the Eagles defense and specifically the secondary looking so much better in the win over Kansas City, who deserves the majority of the credit? Well, there's no doubt that Kevin Byard deserves some of it, as he revealed that he made a big change to the secondary right when he arrived in Philly that has paid dividends in helping them improve. And speaking of defensive improvements, reports are suggesting that Howie Roseman may be interested in going out and adding this former All-Pro linebacker, but could the move actually happen? Plus, Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni both defended Brian Johnson for recent criticism, but Nick has been facing some of his own, as he's currently being attacked on social media, and outside hate and disrespect for the Eagles certainly seems to be in abundance right now. So let's talk about it. We're not going to waste any time. Let's get straight into it. So the Eagles win over the Chiefs didn't just mark what was arguably the Eagles' best win of the season, but it also marked the most watched game in general of the entire NFL year, at least as of before the Thanksgiving games were played, as we know that those always get the best numbers, but the Eagles and Chiefs game at the time held the title of the most watched NFL game of the year, as it averaged 28.9 million viewers, making it not just the most watched game of the season, but also the most watched Monday night football game in over 25 years. I mean, that's extremely impressive. And then you go look at the fact that again, before Thanksgiving, the Eagles had the top three most watched games of the entire NFL season with the Philly Dallas game being number two and the game versus the Jets being number three. And you kind of got to ask the same question that Jamal did here on Twitter. Are the Eagles America's team now? I mean, I personally like to think so. I've been kind of saying that for a while now, but if I'm being completely honest, I more so just think it's people tuning in and praying for an Eagles loss. And it makes me happy knowing that they leave disappointed pretty much every time. <laughs> Still, it is interesting to see just how much disrespect and hate has been thrown at the Eagles recently. With them winning so much these past couple seasons, just everyone seems to hate the birds. From the fans being voted as the most annoying fan base by anonymous NFL players, to Jalen Hurts being disrespected on Twitter with people acting like for some reason he's not a worthy MVP candidate. I mean, the amount of Jalen Hurts disrespect I've seen recently is truly crazy to me, especially with him now being the MVP favorite and breaking Cam Newton's rushing touchdown record. I guess people just for some reason can't accept that Jalen Hurts is one of the best players in the NFL and he's just a winner. I mean, as Liam on Twitter said, quote, he might have just become the most hated quarterback for winning since Tom Brady. Yeah, you know, Hurts still obviously has a long way to go before he even gets near Brady, but early on in his career, just like Brady, he's done nothing but win and I guess people love to hate on that. Same way they love to hate on Nick Sirianni for just being himself as he's currently being attacked on social media for his actions after the Eagles win over the Chiefs. Now look, I'm not delusional. I get how this could be annoying if you're a fan of another team. Sirianni's just one of those guys that you love if he's on your side and you hate if he's not. I mean, I personally love him showing all of his emotions on the sidelines and trash talking during and after the games. He just is who he is, and I think he fits the spirit of Philadelphia so well. But I do got to say, to the average NFL fan, you're seriously going to sit here and tell me that if you were the head coach of an NFL team, you wouldn't be getting all hyped up after big wins like this and trash talking to opposing teams and fans. I just don't buy that. I really don't, because I know what I would be doing. I mean, people just need to get off their high horse and stop being so soft about it. Just let the guy have fun doing what he loves. I mean, he should get to do that, especially when he's helping his team win so many games. But no, I guess it's completely fine when former Chiefs wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster trash talks James Bradbury after the Chiefs Super Bowl win over the Eagles, or when a milk called Eagles tears drops in Kansas City. No one bats an eye to that, but when Sirianni does anything, he's a corny mf'er, as Chiefs linebacker Willie Gay put it. But hey, whatever. Like Jason Kelsey said... <laughs> So now Sirianni and the Birds will head home to take on the Buffalo Bills in their Kelly Green jerseys, where shocker, despite the Eagles having the best record in the NFL and being at home in this game, they're not favored to win, as according to ESPN Analytics, they give the Birds just a 45.5% chance to win the game. Which is ridiculous, especially since the Eagles have been beating good teams this year, including this past week, beating the Super Bowl champs. Although I will admit, it definitely wasn't the Eagles' best game, especially offensively, and the guy that's been taking the most heat for this is offensive coordinator Brian Johnson, as his play calling during this game was really questionable at times and that's kind of been an ongoing issue this entire year and a lot of Eagles fans seem to be pretty fed up with Johnson at this point but despite all the criticism that he's been getting both Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni came to his defense yeah I think he's uh controlling he's controlling the things that he can I mean he's about his he's about his business I mean you know he's a guy he was like he was the OC at Utah at the age of 23 24 I think you know so he's he's been doing this um a very long time and he has a, when we talk about being, talk about some someone that's rare in rare company, he's, he's done this and he's been kind of one of a kind in it in a sense of just a, the, the experience and the route that he's taken to get to where he is now. You know, he's doing a, he's doing a great job with it um, and we just continue to grow. Shoot, I think 
Brian's done a phenomenal job of calling the game. Uh, I really feel like we haven't we haven't missed. You know, obviously Shane did an unbelievable job all last year, but I don't feel like we've missed a beat um, on offense. Uh, we're we're we've been in a good groove, and, and Brian has just done to me has done a great job of leading this group. Have done has done a great job of calling the game, um, adjusting in the game. I just think he's done a, a top notch job, and that was an example of that. I mean, I don't know. I like Hertz and Sirianni sticking up for their offensive coordinator. I mean, what else are they supposed to do? They're not going to call him out or say anything bad about him publicly. And while, yes, there has been a lot to complain about with Johnson's play calling at times this year, it hasn't been all bad. I mean, the group is still one of the top offenses in the league. They've been able to move the ball really well. And throughout the year, they've improved drastically, especially in the red zone, which is super important. And let's not forget, this is Coach Johnson's first year as a coordinator at the NFL level. Things aren't going to be perfect right away. And I think we've seen him already grow over time and just get better. And I do think he does deserve some credit for the Eagles offensive success. I mean, it's not easy to call the plays. It's not easy to be an offensive coordinator at the NFL level. And like I said, you've definitely seen him improve as the year has gone on. But then again, there are the times where the play calling makes absolutely zero sense and it gets maddening. But still, I think as fans, we just got to be patient and hope he continues to get better. I'm not saying don't hold him accountable. Definitely do that like we always do. But I think in this situation, being patient is the only thing Eagles fans can do. I mean, we know he's not going to get fired in the middle of the year. So him figuring things out is the best shot we have. And it's not like the Eagles are losing a bunch of games because of him so overall i think we just got to stick it out and hope johnson figures it all out eventually but how are you guys feeling about the situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments now in the spirit of thanksgiving the eagles should be very thankful that each unit whether it be the offense or the defense has been able to bail each other out on various points in the year and specifically defensively when the offense has struggled they've really been able to come through and keep the Eagles in these games. As this stat shows that every game the Eagles offense has a negative EPA per play, the defense compensates and holds the opposing offense to a negative EPA per play as well. So the Birds defense and Sean Desai deserve a tremendous amount of credit for this. And I think specifically Desai needs to be recognized for his willingness to make adjustments. I mean, this week against the Chiefs, they were able to be so successful because they completely changed how they play defensively as they ran a lot more dime packages. And instead of rolling with the more Fangio style of defense we're used to from Desai, as honest NFL on Twitter pointed out it looked like more of a Belichick style instead and it ended up working in slowing down what can be a lethal Chiefs offense so again huge credit to Desai for being willing to adjust which is just so refreshing to see from an Eagles defensive coordinator but Desai isn't the only one who deserves credit for the Eagles defensive improvement as the players were much better on Monday night too and Kevin Byard in particular not only elevated his level of play but it was revealed how he's managed to help raise the level of play from the entire secondary so don't worry we're going to talk about that in just a minute but real quick I want to say if you are in Enjoying this video and want to see others like it coming in the future and you're part of that 75% of people that hasn't done so already make sure you go down subscribe to the channel and really importantly turn on notifications so you don't miss when these videos are uploaded I think that's a win-win for the both of us I get more people watching the videos and you don't miss any more Eagles content just like this and also while you're at it make sure you hit that like button as well I would greatly appreciate it now with that being said let's get back into the video so there's no secret that Kevin Bard is a great leader and that's been on display ever since he got to Philadelphia and Eagle safety Reed Blankenship highlighted a huge aspect of that that is really help the entire secondary elevate their level of play. Get to learn from him, you know, every day. You know, as soon as he walked in the meeting room, he demanded communication from everybody. And that's one big thing that we needed in our room. And, you know, having him back there, having the knowledge he has, you know, makes everything go a lot of, you know, more smooth in the back end. How do you demand this thing? Just like, legit demand, like, give me a nickel call. Give me, like, like he's demonstrative of that, you know, and that's what, that's what you need. So you heard Reed say it there. As soon as Bayard got here, he demanded the communication to be better. And Bayard later spoke about that, and he explained why he believes communication is key to the success of a defense. Just everybody talking through, you know, the process of, you know, whatever we're going over, you know, during the day, whether it's circuit, first, second down, third down, red zone, whatever it may be, uh, just being able to communicate the calls. Uh, and then especially for me, just coming and learning the defense. Like, I want to hear guys talking. I want to hear how guys are seeing routes, how guys are seeing things, and, uh, and if you want to be an elite, a really good secondary, uh, I think communication is always the biggest thing. And I think the more you communicate with guys, the more you get comfortable with each other. And um, sometimes you can start anticipating things a lot better as well. I will say, um, especially with all the injuries that has been going on throughout this year, um, there wasn't a lot of, or there isn't going to be a lot of cohesiveness when you're talking about guys that haven't really played with each other. So I think then the premium, it has to be a premium communication because, you know, I think my first time playing here was, was, well, the second game I played here was the first time that they had back-to-back -back secondary 
guys. So it's like, hey, we got to make sure we're communicating even more. So I like what Byard said there. Communication is key to having an elite defensive secondary. And with all the injuries in different lineups that the Eagles have dealt with on the back end, communication definitely has to be a big emphasis and it has to be on point. And I really think that you've already been able to start to see the chemistry back there improving since Byard arrived. And overall, you just got to applaud Byard for his leadership and what he's been able to bring to this Eagles locker room. And he isn't the only midseason acquisition by the Eagles to have an impact like that. And Nick Sirianni spoke to that on Wednesday. I think what Howie and his staff have done an unbelievable job of is is not only getting good players that can help us, but good people that fit into the locker room. But that's also, right, and so we, we get these guys like Roby and, and, and Kevin Byard that, that have come in, Julio, that have come in, and, like, these are top-notch pros as far as, as players, but they're also really good teammates as well. Like Nick said, huge credit to Howie for finding these good locker room guys that can also contribute. And one of the guys he mentioned in Julio Jones seems to be earning a bigger role as time goes on, as with Dallas Goddard out, Julio was on the field a lot more on Monday, specifically playing twice as many snaps as he had played in any other game with the birds but it does sound like even if Goddard did get hurt we may have seen Julio's role increased anyway based on what Nick Sirianni said here mm -hmm. yeah some of it is that um you know with Dallas out there it, again it doesn't fall on just one person and so some of it is that some of it is he's ramping he's continuing to ramp up and you know obviously he didn't have training camp he didn't have all those different things and he's been here for a certain amount of time now where we feel better and better that he knows what uh he really did pick it up really fast but you know that he knows all the adjustments and every different thing like that and that his body's ready to play there so a little bit of supplementing Dallas a little bit that he's ready to go more and more and more each week and uh, we'll see how that continues. So just based off that it seems like Julio just ramping up and getting more in shape has helped him get on the field more in addition to Goddard's injury. Now I'd just like to see them find ways to get the ball in his hands a little bit more and see if he really still is capable of making plays. So let me know what you guys think. Can Julio eventually make a bigger impact for this Eagles offense than what we've seen so far? Now it's no doubt going to be tougher now that Quez Watkins is back as the Eagles activated his 21 day practice window after he's been dealing with a hamstring injury since week five. So with Quez back, I'll be curious to see if he slides right back into that wide receiver three spot and how much that impacts a guy like Julio who's just starting to see his playing time increase. I mean, there's no doubt a lot of questions still to be answered with this team, and that includes whether or not Howie Roseman wants to go out and add another former start of the roster. As with Colts former All-Pro linebacker Darius Shaquille Leonard being released earlier this week, it seems the Eagles and Howie Roseman have interest as reported by both Adam Schefter and Diana Rossini of ESPN. And Leonard would be a good addition to the Eagles defense now that N'Kobe Dean's out for an extended period of time, and the Birds definitely could use some more depth at that position, again with Dean being out. Now Leonard would come in and be a backup more than likely as he's not been playing at the level he used to, and both Zach Cunningham and Nicholas Marr are playing better football right now than Leonard is, and it would make sense that if Leonard did get another offer from another team that offered more playing time, he would probably go take that instead, but it is very much worth noting that he has a connection with Nick Sirianni from the time they spent together in Indy, and it also seems like everyone wants to go to the Eagles right now, so I don't know, I'd like this move for depth if it happens, but I guess we'll see. And let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Should the Eagles go out and sign Shaq Leonard? Also, again, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you go down, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and drop a like on it to help show some support. Obviously, today's Thanksgiving, so I just wanted to say I'm very thankful for every single one of you guys for tuning in and watching the videos. It truly does mean a lot to me. And if you want to watch another video recapping the Eagles and Chiefs game, you can go check this out right here. Now, with all that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this one, guys. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.